Hey folks, welcome to another custom lesson. This time I was requested to make a melee onmyo switch grave sort of build uh, by Joe Shang. So my apologies if I butchered your last name, but I was given a lot of creativity to work with this and the enemy in question that you wanted to see this dealt with or deal with was Otakemaru. So I'm going to show just that what I was able to come up with and hopefully have a lot of fun applying confusion so the weapons that I'm using are switch glaive because that's specifically what I was asked and then since you've indicated a huge desire for magic based stuff and stats I figured hey you know what we'll just go split staff because it also scales with magic so you don't really have to worry too much about min maxing in that regard however there is another reason I picked split step as opposed to picking a whole different weapon altogether and that is simply because I feel that these two weapons can complement one another. While Switchglaive is really good at inflicting a lot of break against human targets, I find that split staff is remarkable when it comes to key damage. So we kind of have best of both worlds there which is why I picked the weapons. Also for the weapons they happen to be corrupted but you can literally pick any element. I think purity would probably work better for you since you wanted me to showcase this against Otake Maru, but it's really up to you. Um, you can just see these are weapons that I've had for a while, and these are pretty good for me, but they're not min-maxed by any means. Now, when it comes to Guardian Spirit and Soul Core setups, since the theme I was tasked with was Confusion and Magic, this is what I went with. So, when it comes to elemental base play, I found that Kuzunoha the Fox is overall really good. If you take a look here, you have various things that can facilitate that elemental damage, which is great. Uh, since you're inflicting the elements almost all the time, this is great. 10% for all yokai ability damage, which is phenomenal. And then since you are going for a mage base play, and you're going to be using a lot of Onmyo magic, can't go wrong with this. Elemental weapon damage, if you're buffing your weapon so you don't have to worry about, you know, being locked to a specific weapon, great, you've got it here. So maybe you want to stick with corrupted weapons and then just use the elemental talismans. Great, you get a bonus there. Now there is another option that you can use. Uh, while this does have anima, anima bonus omeo magic hit by default, there is another great Guardian Spirit you can use, which is a bit more defensive, which is Genbu. Uh, I chose not to use Genbu, I'll do so at some other point, but you can use this one because it gives a lot of the same things, but one thing you might really like is Stalwart Onmyo Magic. And what is Stalwart Onmyo Magic? It grants immunity to being staggered if you are attacked while casting. In the meantime, the damage you take is reduced, which is huge. But it also still has this anima bonus, so this is another great option. But I really wanted to work with something a little different, a little bit more fresh, so I went with Kuzunoha the Fox, which is great. A bit more offensive, and the Guardian Spirit is a lot of fun to use. Now the Soul Cores that I used are as follows. We have Kasha. Kasha is a great, amazingly powerful fire damage core. It is superb in that regard. I would say the most important things are just uh, they're kind of there by default. Life Drain Yokai Ability Hit is awesome. Faster Movement Umberto Absorption is great. So if you want to rank this up as high as you can so you can get more Life Drain on any of your Yokai Ability Hits, by all means go for it. As for these stats, they're not nearly as important. Simply because if you are going to rotate a lot of Onmyo Magic, and I'll talk about a gear consideration that'll be super valuable for endgame stuff, then it's not as urgent to get super good stats here. I happen to have super efficient yokai abilities, but I didn't even power all this all the way up. But yeah, it's still pretty powerful and great to apply fire and just just destroy straight up. It straight up destroys. Next is Maelstrom Oni B. I wanted to make sure you had a quick cancel core that also applied an element, and you can't go wrong with any of the Oni B cores. Since I'm running fire, I decided, hey, I'll go with water, and then I'll explain why I didn't go for lightning or something like that. But I decided to go for water. I would recommend that you boost up this rank as much as you can so that you can get anima bonus elemental attack, which means if you're using elemental talismans or anything of the sorts, um, you can get a lot of damage. So yeah, really good. Another great way to get more anima. I did not have yokai ability key pulse on any of my cores for the phantom setup, so I would recommend that. So I just picked whichever one was I guess suitable for my needs. Th these are nice. Increased defense and increased attack. That's nice. 
But yeah, it's your quick cancel core and it's very valuable. Last but not least, Lightning Gods of Yomi. Really powerful core for a variety of reasons. But as you can see in this image over here or this video, you move and inflict a lot of lightning. So it doubles as a reposition and lightning application. And it's it's really awesome. All, one thing I would advise is to rank up this soul core as well. All new magic power makes sense if you're going for the mage route. Um, melee damage versus electrified isn't as important, but I actually should have ranked this up as highly as I could. Anima bonus inflict ailment. If you can manage to get this, it's really good because you're going to apply a lot of debuffs using magic, right? You might apply, you might apply sloth, uh, devigorate, weakness, whatever. And every time you do so, not only do you get an anima bonus from inflicting the ailment, but hey, only a magic hit. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. So it's super good to get the specific anima bonus and you rank that up as high as you can. This is a premium that should not be underestimated. But yeah, Lightning God's Yomi is awesome. Now to continue with the whole elemental confusion mage base theme, I decided, hey, we need a brute spirit, of course, because we need to be able to deal with certain burst attacks that only the brute can handle. But I specifically picked this purity Spirit so that we have access to purity at all times. So with Hull, you have imbued purity on strong attack, which is great. So hey, awesome. If I really want to go for using a lot of strong attacks and inflicting purity that route, you can. You have that flexibility. And the Guardian Spirit attack in of itself is pretty cool too. Now, when it comes to the Soul Core choice, I figured, hey, the, the primary three ones we have on the Corrupted Guardian Spirit basically cover four out of the five major elements, right? But this is all Omeo Magic theme, but I still want to keep that magic power at all times. Now, how can I do that and still fulfill the overall requirements I feel are really helpful for any sort of build, if per se, when it comes to a gore, gore, <laughs> core guide loadout. You know what? There's lots of words, okay? In any case, the one thing that I was lacking or I felt lacking was something that really reliably provides me key damage because as stated in the Extend Confusion guide that I made uh, some videos back, Confusion works best on yokai that are out of key and just cycling the elements from there. So first we need to get them out of key in the first place and I don't want to entirely depend upon my weapon. So I figured, hey, you know what? Let's just get something that destroys everything. And I decided to go with Gozuki because I got 25 attunement. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Gozuki is remarkably powerful and has super stagger properties. It is ridiculous. Um, I would say if you can get an anima bonus on here, great. But you don't really need it and you'll see why. Uh, Yokai ability key pulse is phenomenal too. Make sure you get that once per guardian spirit. But yeah, this is like the super key damage stagger core. Totally recommend it. It's literally a beast. Uh, pun totally intended. Now to keep the theme of Onmyo Magic going, instead of say picking Otake Maru, Otake Maru as a soul core is really cool, but I decided, hey, you know what? Let's go with Ryomen Sakuna, because why? Anima bonus Onmyo Magic hit as well. So you can get the benefits from the mage based guardian spirits on a soul core instead, which is awesome. And putting this on a brute is great. Anytime you inflict confusion, Hey, guess what? You get some anima back. I would totally recommend you boost this rank up as high as you can so you can optimize these as much as you want. Um, I happen to get lucky with some elemental damage and melee damage dark realm, but that's not really a big deal. This soul core is superb. I mean, look at this. There's a bit of a startup time, but once it gets going, there's a ton of damage and confusion possibilities that can work from there. So this really helps. And then I felt like we needed some sort of core to disengage that also applies an element well hey get on gilki i would say the most important things have nothing really to do with stealth or backstab damage but the other special effects that you can get so feel free to roll whatever you want um, anima bonus scorch enemy is cool but maybe you want to say get anima bonus confused enemy if you can get that so just any sort of generic anima bonus might be really valuable to you that may help you more often than anything else but again it may not be necessary when you are able to use all sorts of onmyo magic and now um, aside from life drain yokai ability hit you pretty much have a complete package when it comes to soul cores and that is fire water lightning corruption up here and then you got a purity guardian spirit you have supreme key damage another ability another way to work in confusion and then just a nice way to escape and corruption at the same time. It's super cool to have all the elements 
in your possession. But now there is one thing that will take this over the top. And I mean that in earnest. And let me see if I can find it real quick. And this is may not apply to players early on in the game, but if you are in Dream of the Wise, this is premium. If you get Sukuyomi, Grace of Sukuyomi would make this just straight up busted in my opinion. If you're using a lot of Onmyo magic and you depend upon it for whatever way or shape or form you decide to play, this is the grace for you. And why is that? Well, whatever, life, but reduce defense anytime you hit with Onmyo magic, boost its power, do more damage when you're at full health, use it less often, and then where it gets ridiculous is this, empowered Onmyo magic. So grants you the Empowered Onmyo Magic. God dang it, mouse, do the thing. <laughs> I'll read it here. Grants you the Empowered Onmyo Magic status enhancements whenever you use a magic item. Basically, you get a damage buff that scales off your magic power. And then if you do a certain amount of damage to enemies, you'll get the original Onmyo Magic thing back up. So let's say you use like a water familiar talisman or something uh let's see if i can find one yeah let's say you decide to use a water familiar talisman you hit enemies a bunch and then you get the jutsu back no matter what so that's awesome so you can effectively almost go infinite with your jutsu provided you're smart about it this is crazy so if you're a fan of say sloth talisman well hey guess what sloth attack them a bunch you get sloth right back and so being able to have near infinite access to your magic means you can have near and infinite access to your getting a ton of anima which means throwing out these crazy soul cores over and over and over again now in the gameplay footage that i'm going to show not right now um, i actually do not use this at all to give you a baseline of what to work with and it's crazy in any case before i continue let me showcase some things that you can do to work with the switch glaive and since i'm using a split staff to facilitate the magic style magic style type of play just for the stat allocation then yeah let's touch let's just let's just showcase this all right let's just showcase some things you can do and then i'll showcase yokai shift now your quick cancel core will be oni b so make sure you take advantage of it anytime you need to so let's see what you can do. You can do things like Just Reprisal, Flash Attack if you want, cancel all sorts of actions with Oni B alone. It's a really popular core for good reason. And yeah, if you have a second element on your weapon, you can already conflict Confusion just with that alone. Um, things can get kind of cool uh, with a Switchglaive. You can do things like Arc of Chaos into Lightning God's Ayomi. For that cool range based play. Um, I would say Kasha is ultimately just a power damage play. And yeah, when you have Confusion and Kasha at the same time, it's just ridiculous. Um, with the Split Staff, you can do a lot of the similar things when it comes to making sure you can take advantage of your range. It's just crazy. You can use these attacks just as extensions of your play. And what's nice is that with abilities like Shin Crusher, which I didn't time correctly whatsoever, you have access to key damage, and you got access to good break with the Switch Glaive, so mix and match them to suit your needs. Now when it comes to the Brute Assault Cores, things can get a little different, so Ongyoki is something you may just want to use on its own. Here, he should just... He should just disappear. Oh, I guess not. Ongyoki is something you can use to disengage from combat. But what can be really fun is finding the time and place to throw in Ryomen Sakuna. And what's really surprising about Ryomen is that I want you to pay attention to the soonest to I can to how soon I can block. You can see that my character is blocking, and then the animation ends, so you can actually buffer inputs far earlier than you may realize and it's just such a seamless transition between such a powerful core and anything else i find that cores like gozuki are great to help you animation cancel and do a massive power play so here's something i like to do boom super dead one thing that i think will really assist in this style of play is getting used to swapping between the weapons 
quite rapidly. So whether it is doing the split staff flash attack, which I think is really valuable in this scenario. And also sheet swapping for near instant thin airs from the Switch Glaive. It's really good. You can just straight up mix and match so many different abilities and with the access to power plays, it gets quite nutty. I mean, look at that. Doesn't really feel fair now, does it? And you have access to so much, it's nuts. Anytime you need to engage, re-engage, you can do so. So take advantage of things like darting cloud. Engage, reposition. It's pretty wild. Need super power play. And they're mega dead. And keep in mind, this is without Onmyo magic. The, the fact of the matter is, you can just use your soul cores when you have enough anima, like at any time, and you'll destroy. Now here's where it gets kind of crazy too, in terms of combos with Yokai Shift. I had a, quite a bit of fun doing this. So let's deplete some key, right? You can use Shin Crusher to do so on the split staff. All right. All right, let's pop Yokai Shift. Ah, oh, can I get the grapple? No, I can't. That's okay. So let me actually deactivate it and kill this dude. Come on. All right, come on. By the way, Gozuki has a ridiculous amount of uh, gauge charge. It's ridiculous. And it I believe it works in a way that if you hit multiple enemies, you get multiple sources of Amrita. <laughs> it's pretty comical. All right, so let's deplete some key. Let's break the horn and then get him into Yokai Shift mode. Well, let's get ourselves into Yokai Shift mode, right? All right, almost out. All right, now watch. Here's a cool thing you can do. All right, we got a freaking laser beam on the way. And then cancel with Lightning Gods of Yomi. You already have two instances of elemental applications. And now when Kasha's out, you can go for like full combinations of stuff. It's pretty crazy. So definitely mess with that. It's just... It's literally a cluster of superb elemental damage and pressure, coupled with just some intermittent Onio magic use, and things just get even dumber. All right, let's use a Brute Yokai Shift to show you what's possible with it. Come on. This is pretty fun. All right, Guardian Spirit into Ryomen for triple confusion. Well, triple elemental application. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. Straight up. Or you can throw in that on top of that for some super pressure play. Got access to fire as it is. <laughs> They're super dead, man. Alright, come on, come on. Let me, uh, break the horn. Come on, just do it again. Alright, so here's... I'll show it once more. Guardian Spirit. As soon as you see it connect, just go to town. Oh, you're dead. It's so dirty, man. And anytime you just need to back out, you got that. It's ridiculous. Like, you'll find yourself using the craziest amount of soul cores with this setup. It's, it's just kind of comical how ridiculous it can be. I mean, they're out of key, they're confused, they're gonna die, and you're using only magic, things will die even more. I wouldn't say you need to really worry too much about comboing things as much as just being super offensive with your magic, uh, occasionally using key pressure routines like Shin Crusher. Um, if you need to deal with break, you can always work in a Cyclone. You know, I don't think you'll depend too much on your weapons. But yeah, let's just show you some stuff that's possible again. It just, it's not really a melee base sort of loadout. Dude, I can't, I can't do anything really. I can't really combo because they die by the time I even get anything started. I mean, seriously, what am I supposed to do if they're just dead? I mean, look at this. I'm not even going to go for the grapple. 
charge this up too, because why the frick not? Just dead on the soul cores alone, so you're gonna have access to a ton of power. And make sure you use that. And again, with things like, let me get the filter back up. With things like, come on, come on, Grace of Tsukiyomi, you should absolutely get. All right, when you have empowered on your magic, coupled with anima bonus on your magic hit thing, you're just you're gonna feel like. I don't even know what you're gonna feel like. You're gonna you're gonna become the Neo with confusion. Yeah, I my comparisons suck. In any case, I hope this was informative and should be quite a powerful play. And now I'm gonna transition to some cool, well hopefully cool gameplay, right William? You agree? Yes you do. Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. You guys know what's up. It's time for the gameplay showcase. So I picked Calamity's Pulse as a mission to do to showcase the power of this setup. This is crazy. It's honestly a little difficult to squeeze in weapon-based play with this simply because the soul cores are so powerful and when you have Omnio Magic as support, which I'm not using, believe it or not, then it's just like you almost don't need to depend upon your weapon. So that might be nice for someone who's playing uh, this this sort of setup. But in any case, I'm trying to take advantage of the properties of Switchglaive. When I can get Yatsuno Kami out of key, that's when I aim for confusion. I'm unable to deplete him out of max key. I'm very close, but I just mess it up when it comes to confusion. There were definitely better options I had, and I should have probably relied upon those. But it all honestly doesn't matter when Yatsuno Kami has lost already nearly half of his health. Probably not. But yeah, I'm trying to apply one element. Let's see what I decide to do now. I make sure to clinch the out of key pressure so that I can go for the grapple. And then I'm like, all right, well, what's next? I guess I'll do this attack to help me generate anima and help conflict corruption again. And then back to Switchglaive. I'm just paying attention to Yatsuno Kami's attack. I go for a high risk focus retribution, which feels so good when it lands. Yatsuno Kami has a lot of telegraph attacks. So I take advantage of that to inflict confusion, extend the duration of it. I wasn't able to capitalize on on it fully, but in honesty, even with this not perfectly efficient gameplay, it doesn't really matter when my soul cores, just two or three of them on their own, just destroy this boss. I mean, Kasha is doing a lot of work here for me. And so this just sets the stage for all sorts of things that are going to happen over the course of this showcase. So, Yatsuno Kami, no trouble whatsoever. Next is Shuten Doji, in which Kasha will not be something I can really rely upon. But I can tell you that doesn't really matter as much as you might think. Shuten Doji, both forms of him are really tanky. The faster version is not what I get to fight here, but still the properties of each are more or less the same. Um, Gozuki is great for key damage, so you can interrupt him whenever you want. Also, one thing to note is that Shuten Doji will actually go into the Dark Realm if he has enough Amrita in his gourd, so using Extraction Talismans is actually a bit of a double-edged sword in this case. But does it matter when Gozuki depletes so much key? Probably not. And mixed with Corruption, it's pretty crazy. You may have better results if you decide to use Purity instead, but... Um, <laughs> I don't think it matters that much. I mean, look at this. He's gonna be out of maximum key, and I'm able to inflict Saturate, which is ridiculous, for extra damage, and then off into Yokai Shift, do a ton of extra damage, shoot out the freaking laser beam, do corruption, do all of the attacks, get corrupt, sorry, get confusion right up again. Throw out Kasha just cause I can, even if it doesn't do the most damage. I think I was trying to switch uh, my Guardian Spirits because I really wanted to grapple shoot in Doji, but I didn't really have any luck. Um, let's see what I decide to do. Hey, I, I figure, hey, you know what? I'll just, I'll just apply Confusion again. And then I throw out Kasha because even if Kasha doesn't do extra fire damage, it still does a lot of base damage, period. Um, now I'm like, you know, I really want to showcase the Brute Power, but <laughs> it's pretty difficult for me to do so when he's dying so quickly in contrast to what I had thought. So it's just an onslaught of elemental pressure and this is again neglecting the entirety of Omnio Magic, all right? Like, sure, I've got some helpful buffs, but by and large, it's not like something I'm using. I'm not using Sloth Talismans or really anything like that offensively. It's just things to help me defensively. 
so now Otakimaru, the main course of this entire uh, video, is going to be this guy. And so Otakimaru is a pretty crazy enemy, but one general strategy to have against him is just try to stick behind him and pay attention to which swords he's using, because then you can dictate, more or less anticipate rather, what attacks he's going to do. So if you're in close range, he generally likes to do that crazy fire attack, um, he likes to do that other fire attack as well, if you're further away he does a different one, so you can, you can kind of control what he's going to do. But the strategy that I'm using with this setup is the same. Now my, my, I'm actually pretty desperate to get him into a grapple state so I can Yokai shift him. Here's the value of Ongyoki just saying, yeah, I don't feel like dealing with half your moves of Takemaru, I'll just wait. So that's pretty much it. The routine plan is get him low on key with things like Shin Crusher from Split Staff, using Seesaw Strike, whatever other Split Staff abilities I have. Um, I was fortunate to get the Brute Counter there, so now I'm definitely going to use Brute Yokai Shift, and it's a lot of fun. And here we go. Let's. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. Alright, and then what? Railman? And then. Oh, Tri Elemental Confusion into that, into Gozuki. Oh dear lord, but. This is awful. Confusion yet again, preventing him from losing. Oh my god, it's too fast for me to be able to talk about. But yeah, look at that crazy pressure that I'm able to utilize with this Yokai Shift alone. And so I'm constantly able to inflict all sorts of ailments. Um, this is the one time I totally messed up. I was like, yo, that sucks, man. You depleted my Yokai Shift. But I was like, you know, given that I had no effort taking about 80% of your health, Fine, it's okay if I lose Yokai Shift. I mean, come on, if I can peace out with things like Ongyoki, it's, it's gonna be pretty fun. Alright, there's like the one ranged fire attack that Otagemaru has. And then, yeah, just generally stay behind him, pay attention to which sword that he's pulling out, and then you'll be in overall really good shape. And you will destroy him. There really isn't too much trouble with this setup. Um, you have so many different crazy options. I decided to, I guess, try to finish out with Kasha, but he's just dead. It's over. Otakimaru, you're done, man. It's over. So yeah, this setup is remarkably powerful, really good at inflicting elements, and I didn't even cap to capitalize on Omio magic. So if you do that with Sukuyomi, you will destroy everything. In any case, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.